Today, I wanna to talk to you about whether machines can be creative. Hi, it's James Taylor here, keynote speaker on creativity, innovation, and artificial intelligence, and the founder of Super Creativity U. Now, have you heard of the Turing test? This is a test invented by Alan Turing, uh, made famous in the movie The Imitation Game, uh, first created in 1950, the, the, this particular test by Alan Turing, which was to test whether machines could create the kind of behaviors that means that we couldn't tell them from a human being or not. They're, they're, they're basically, the machine is able to have levels of intelligence that can pass themselves off as human levels of intelligence. Now, made really famous in the movie, but have you heard of another type of test? This is called the Lovelace test. Now, the Lovelace test was named after Ada Lovelace, who is a math was a mathematician. She was actually the daughter of Lord Byron, the famous poet. And Ada Lovelace said, no, no, you've got it wrong. The real sign of intelligence is whether something can create or not, can be creative. So in her case, she said, no, what is important for a machine to pass the test of intelligence is whether a machine can create something so good, so creative, that it could be, you might have thought it was a human that created it. So it can be mistaken for the creation of a human. So this is the Lovelace test, this idea that machines can create something that is truly creative. And uh, there's different views on this. Marcus de Sautoy uh, wrote a wonderful book recent, recently, um, and it really talked about this idea about where machines are going, where artificial intelligence and algorithms and, uh, uh, and machine learning is going, whether we can actually start to see machines kind of get there. And uh, where I personally feel just now is whether we're gonna pass the Lovelace test. I don't think so in uh, probably in the next kind of decade, but I think we're getting closer all the time. Do I think that machines will be really truly creative? And not just creative in what we call small c creativity, but creativity in terms of creating new art forms, new genres in literature, uh, new ways, new industries and in ways, in ways of thinking, new philosophical concepts. In my lifetime, yes, probably. I think that may, may likely happen. Now, do I feel threatened by that? As someone who speaks and writes about creativity and human creativity specifically, no, I'm actually really excited about it. It's like having a, a really smart friend who is also creative that I can collaborate with now. So I see these machines, if we get there, that can pass the Lovelace test as just really cool creative collaborators. They're going to create in a different way from me as a, as a human. They will have their own machine way of creating. It may in some cases be better for some forms, some art forms, for example, some ways of, of innovation. It may be better than me as a, as a human, but it, it will probably be different. And that's where I think is interesting. I think this idea of having a diversity of creatives, whether that's not just of other humans' creatives in a team is powerful, but if you can bring in machines who have a different perspective on creativity at some point, then think about that. Think about what we could potentially create together. So, the Lovelace test. Do you think that, let's say, in the next 50 years, that a machine will pass the Lovelace test, that a machine will truly be creative in the next 50 years. Leave your comments below, say yes, if you think it is, no, if you don't think that is going to happen. My name is James Taylor, thanks for watching.